Well, I was quite amazed at that little brilliant presentation on logic. I actually did my PhD on the intersection of logic and probability theory, but don't worry, I'm not going to talk about that. I mean, I'm quite schizophrenic. I have a logical half and I have a Nietzsche half, and I don't know what they have to do with each other. Um, I'm going to talk about nihilism and the death of God, um, and I'm going to begin by reading a passage. This is always the hardest thing for me because I'm a very bad reader. And it's interesting, this is passage, it's 125 of a book called The Gay Science by Friedrich Nietzsche, a famous 19th century philosopher. And famously, Nietzsche went mad himself. And it's kind of very prescient in a way. And this figure kind of is Nietzsche in a certain sense. He's prefiguring himself. Um, so this is called The Madman. Have you not heard of that madman who lit a lantern in the bright morning hours, ran into the marketplace and cried incessantly, I seek God, I seek God. As many of those who did not believe in God were standing around just then, he provoked much laughter. Has he got lost? Questioned one. Did he lose his way like a child? Questioned another. Or is he hiding? Is he afraid of us? Has he gone on a voyage? Emigrated? Thus they yelled and whooped and laughed. The madman jumped into their midst and pierced them with his eyes. Whither is God? He cried. I will tell you. We have killed him, you and I. All of us are his murderers. But how did we do this? How could we drink up the sea? Who gave us the sponge to wipe away the entire horizon? What were we doing when we unchained the earth from its sun? Whither is it moving now? Whither are we moving? Away from all suns? Are we not plunging continually backward, sideward, forward in all directions? Is there still any up or down? Are we not straying as through an infinite nothing? Do we not feel the breath of empty space? Has it not become colder? Is not night continually closing in on us? Do we not now need the light of lanterns in the morning? Do we hear nothing as yet of the noise of the grave diggers who are burying God? Do we smell nothing as yet of the divine decomposition? God too decompose. God is dead. God remains dead. And we have killed him. How shall we comfort ourselves, the murderers of all murderers? What is holiest and mightiest of all that the world has yet owned has bled to death under our knives. Who will wipe this blood off us? What water is there for us to clean ourselves? What festivals of atonement? What sacred games shall we have to invent? Is not the greatness of the deed too great for them? Must we ourselves not become God simply to be appear worthy of it? There has never been a greater deed. And whoever is born after us, for the sake of this deed, he will belong to a higher history than all hitherto history. Here the madman fell silent and looked again at his listeners. And they too were silent and stared at him in astonishment. At last he threw his lantern on the ground and it broke into pieces and went out. I have come too early, he said, and then my time is not yet. This, tre this tremendous event is still on its way, still wandering. It has not yet reached the ears of men. Lightning and thunder require time. The light of the stars requires time. Deeds, though done, still require time to be seen and heard. This deed is still more distant from them than the most distant stars. And yet, they have done it themselves. <laughs> That's always hard for me. Um, okay, so what does Nietzsche mean by the death of God? Um, but when he's talking about the death of God, he's talking about the death of the belief in God. Because he's writing in the 19th century, after the age of reason, when a lot of educated people in particular have less and less belief of God. So he's saying the belief of God no longer animates us and no longer grips us and is no longer a central guide to our lives. And why Nietzsche is considered the philosopher of the, philosopher of the death of God is because what Nietzsche does and what he's doing in that passage, he's saying, look, there are lots of you like those people, those are like the village atheists. That's why they laugh and say, has he gone on a holiday when the madman says, where is God? He says, you don't really appreciate what it means to understand the death of God. Because to understand the death of God isn't just to give up on some metaphysical entity, some person, some benevolent ent entity up there in the sky who's looking after us as he look, up, look after his children. It's to lose the foundation for everything. And what Nietzsche says is, he says, you don't know what it means to lose those foundations. Because most of us continue on with, say, Judeo-Christian morality, even though the basis is gone. So Nietzsche says, what will happen, and what he predicts will happen, and he was absolute genius about this, he talked about nihilism. He said, what I predict is nihilism. That will be the history of the next 200 years. 
thinking of the history of Europe. He said, nihilism is when people come to appreciate the real meaning of the death of God. Because to really appreciate the death of God isn't just to give up on that ontology, that idea of what exists, that being in the sky. It's to realize that all the values that we have have been based on that presupposition, and without presupposition, all those values come into question. And so that is what Nietzsche is trying to introduce. And that's why those listeners who are first laughing at him are shocked. That's meant to be us, because we're meant to be shocked. And he said, that shock hasn't really come to us. But bit by bit, he said, it's going to dawn on us that we've got no basis for the values. And it's really true that there are so many secular variants. But for him, it's just religion in disguise. It's religion without the metaphysics. If you think of um, um, 19th century big ideas like utilitarianism of John Stuart Mill, what matters is the greatest happiness of the greatest number, or Marxism or socialism, they are still Christian morality without that metaphysics. Yes, Mill did not have God. Yes, obviously Marx did not have God. But they still carry on what he calls basically a morality of compassion. That they treat the ultimate value to be the question of the suffering and happiness of other people. But that is fundamentally a Christian value. So he said, they've carried on Christian morality. They've just gotten rid of God. But when you get rid of God, you've really gotten rid of the fundamental basis. So we can now ask questions like, why is suffering so important? Why is compassion so important? Why should our end be to try to eliminate suffering or to create well-being among others? Why should we accept that? It's not that Nietzsche was in love with suffering, but he said, at least we should raise the question. And what Nietzsche predicted is, he said, what will happen when people really appreciate the death of God, the death of God is they will start um, they will start with this position, will say, well, what is the basis of our values? There is no basis. And that's what he predicted as nihilism. Nihilism is the absence of all values. Often it's called, um, in the literature now on Nietzsche, the um, nihilism of disorientation. And you get also a lot of this, and nihilism was really put into the popular imagination by the Russian writer Turgenev in his book Fathers and Son, but also by Dostoevsky in The Possessed of the Devils, as it's sometimes called, this idea that there are no ultimate values. There are no ultimate values at all. Now, you'll notice in that passage, he said, must we not become gods to become worthy of the deed? What Nietzsche predicted is he said, what will happen with most of us is when we lose an external authority like God, and we really appreciate it, we'll say, oh, there's no grounding for the ultimate values, therefore there are no ultimate values. And we can have whatever values we want, or we can have no values, right? But what Nietzsche said, and some people think of Nietzsche as, as if he was a um, disciple of nihilism. Nietzsche was not in favor of nihilism. What he said is, nihilism is inevitable, the history of Europe for the next 200 years. But he was not in favor of nihilism. And interestingly, some of the most famous modern appropriators of nihilism, of Nietzsche, are postmodernists. And postmodernists famously say, philosopher Leotard said, oh, there are no meta narratives. A meta narrative is a grand story, like a grand story is God's providential progress, right? God's plan for us, or you know, Marx's idea of the, uh, the coming of the perfect state or the end of history, as it's sometimes called now. He says, well, uh, Leotard says, we don't believe in those um, narratives. There are no master narratives. We can just be ironic. And they often cite Nietzsche as their precursor. But they've got that completely wrong. Nietzsche predicted them, but he wasn't in favor of them. He said, that is inevitable. But in that passage, he says, what must we do to become worthy of the deed? Must we not become gods? What Nietzsche said is, look, the majority of people who are weak as soon as they lose an external authority, they lose all the basis of value. And they have no ultimate values. But he said there are certain people, strong people, and his list nearly always includes Beethoven, um, uh, Goethe's um, always on the list, Wagner's on the list, then he's off the list, and Nietzsche's always on his own list. There are certain people who can give themselves values. These are the people who will overcome nihilism. They will self-impose values. That is, they'll have some ultimate values by which they can give their own lives and, if you like, the whole world meaning. And by the way, when I say that Nietzsche says um, uh, we lose values, Nietzsche actually thinks we have values all the time. Because he thinks Nietzsche thinks we are nothing but bodies composed of drives. And every drive values. Like my hunger drive will value that thing as food. Another drive will value something else. Right? Um, so we have values. But what Nietzsche was talking about is ultimate values. What he meant by ultimate values are values that can give meaning to all of life and all of existence. My hunger drive does not do that. So Nietzsche says values are inescapable, but what God provided us 
was an ultimate value. He says, what's particularly the problem for our modern semi-secular societies is we've lost God. We had these interim grand narratives like socialism, Marxism, utilitarianism, and you see how quickly they run their course, and ultimately we'll come to this nihilistic age, which is pretty much today, he was a genius, he was very prescient, where we have no ultimate values. But Nietzsche wasn't in favour of that. Nietzsche said we have to create our own grand narratives, or meta-narratives if you like, we have to uh, propose our own ultimate values. Now the ultimate value he cared about actually was genius and creativity. And it was from that point that he ventured to make these questions about why should we care about compassion? Why should we care about, suffer care about suffering? Because think how much we care about avoiding suffering. Whereas Nietzsche thought, look, it's not that I'm in favour of suffering, but I'm, what I really care about are great creative individuals. And if all you care about is eliminating suffering, you kind of eliminate greatness. Because to be great is to take on great challenges. And to take on great challenges is invariably to suffer and to fail in trying to achieve them. So Nietzsche said, this absolute obsession we have, which we've inherited from the Judeo-Christian world, of compassion and caring about other suffering, it becomes such a fetishized extreme value that we're blind to other possibilities of values. So what he thought was nihilism opens up a space where future people, as I say, the Nietzsche's of the world, the future Nietzsche's, would create their values. Well, we're now waiting for our next Nietzsche.